display of those events and in the commentary. The reason behind this delay is that an ILS proton, as it follows its pre-programmed flight path, it will pass out of range of the Baikonur receiving stations. At this point, signals are received by stations downrange and transmitted back to Baikonur. This may cause short delays. And now, Russ Pritula, ILS program director, will take us through the final pre-launch stages and through liftoff. Russ? Today's launch of the SES-3 satellite on an ILS Proton is a result of an accumulation of a lot of hard work and long hours. And everyone on the launch team was eagerly awaiting the liftoff. Teams are in their places in the launch bunker, control rooms, ground stations, and communication centers. And the final go for launch polling we mentioned earlier is being completed. In addition to those at the launch site, a lot of hard work to get the project at this stage being done by those watching us live. And we're just seconds away here. We're in the final countdown. We've got just a few seconds left here. Three, two, one, and there you have it. We have ignition start. We have liftoff of an ILS proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with the SCS-3 satellite on board. At about 10 seconds after liftoff, the rocket does a roll maneuver and will soon experience maximum dynamic pressure or max Q. Max Q is the maximum aerodynamic load on the vehicle. It corresponds to about Mach 1.6 and occurs at 1 minute 2 seconds after liftoff. We are 40 seconds into the flight and everything seems to be proceeding nominally as the vehicle heads in an easterly direction with a flight azimuth of about 61.3 degrees. Partly cloudy conditions tonight, so we have a uh, limited view of the vehicle tracking downrange. Still discernible, but uh, not as clear as we sometimes have. Looks a little bit better right now. And uh, we have just gone through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. One minute and 20 seconds in the flight. Enjoying a pretty good view as it heads downrange from the Cosmodrome. If all, all, all goes well, we'll be able to observe at least the first staging event this evening. Just a little bit away from sunrise there in Baikonur, that's why it was a rather dark exit from the launch pad. We are coming up on the first stage's separation from the second stage that is set to occur at two minutes into the flight. And just now hitting the two minute mark, so we're standing by for confirmation from the telemetry center in Baikonur. Russ, you were mentioning all the people at the launch site, people who put so much work into this, and a lot of our work has also been done by those watching us live right now, which include ILS headquarters in Reston, Virginia, SES in Luxembourg, and SES World Skies in Princeton, New Jersey, and at Orbital Sciences in Dulles, Virginia. So, Guy, you have a lot of colleagues as well who are watching this put a lot of work into it. Yes, I'm sure there's people in the uh, Mission Control Center and also in our viewing area. Rest, we have some confirmations? Yes, we have confirmation that the first and second stages have separated. You saw a visual confirmation. We'd like to actually get the telemetry data, and that's what we have now. And I can tell you that the uh, second stage engines actually ignite while still attached to the first stage. And the exhaust in those engines escapes through the open grid work between the stages. Three minutes, just over three minutes into the flight. It looks like we have a signal of a good ignition on all four second stage engines. They will burn for a total of about three minutes and 26 seconds. We're now three minutes and 40 seconds into the flight. The next key mission milestone will be stage 2-3 separation at L plus 5 minutes and 26 seconds. 24 seconds later, the payload fairing will jettison. <laughs> 